Hello, my name is Finley Strauss and I'm a seventh grade member of the Wolf Pack. In this presentation, I will be talking about the Wolverine CubeSat development team and how to use middle school age students as agents for aerospace outreach education. So the group all of the students are part of is called the Wolf Pack. The original members of the Wolf Pack were the first middle school group of students to ever launch a CubeSat into space. But this brings me to an important question. What actually is a CubeSat? A CubeSat is a miniaturized satellite for space research and other applications. Bob Twiggs, then a professor at Stanford University, faced a problem in the late 1990s. He realized his students needed hands-on experience to become better engineers, but the barriers to entry into the satellite business were just too high, too high for most university budgets, and this is how the idea of a CubeSat was created. By using a small form factor, students were constrained in terms of volume, power, and mass. For example, students cannot exceed 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, nor could they exceed a weight of 1.33 kilograms. These constraints forced students to be efficient and have simplified designs to the point they were able to see their missions completed while in graduate school. However, currently most CubeSats are launched by universities, governments, militaries, and now schools. And the Wolfpack is one of these schools. So launching a CubeSat is very difficult and it requires lots of work. For the Wolfpack, one of the first parts to launching a CubeSat is launching a high altitude balloon, or HAB. HABs are important in getting ready to launch a CubeSat. To give a quick background on past HABs, the Wolfpack's first HAB launch was in April of 2017. It was 8 feet in diameter and used an iPod 4 to receive data. It also had a global star telemetry sensor so we could have live video to our ground station. However, typically for the Wolfpack, after doing a how to do balloon launch, the team dives right back into a CubeSat. So the Wolfpack has launched one CubeSat into space so far through NASA's CSLI, or NASA's CubeSat Launch Initiative. This CubeSat is called the YSAT-1. The YSAT-1 is a 1U CubeSat with an NSL FASPA structure. The payload the YSAT-1 tested had to do with extremophile bacteria and low Earth orbit. The mission focused on using fluorescent dye to show whether the bacteria was dead or alive. LEDs in the CubeSat caused the bacteria to fluoresce, correlating to the state of the cells. The YSAT-1 had a Cytox live dead stain. The Wolfpack is also currently working on the CAPSAT-1 to be launched in 2022. The CAPSAT-1 is testing the efficacy of capacitors used to replace lithium-ion batteries. And most recently, the Wolfpack has been focusing on proposals for the Wolfsat 1, 4, and 5. Wolfsat 1 will investigate idenalosakiasis, rates of plastic degradation on orbit versus 1G orbits. Wolfsat 4 will test the efficacy of aluminum oxide as a shield against ionizing radiation. And Wolfsat 5 will characterize the viability of rhizobacteria in space. These proposals were submitted to NASA's CSLI in November, and we are expecting results in March. So throughout this presentation, I've mentioned the name Wolfpack multiple times. The Wolfpack was incorporated as a response to COVID shutdowns. And one incredible thing that the Wolfpack achieved was being designated 501c3 status this year. And one of the best characteristics of the Wolfpack, in my opinion, is that it is open to all dedicated students. That means that if you live anywhere, you can come work on the various projects with the Wolfpack. Currently in our weekly webinars, there are always so many kids from all different states, and I really enjoy getting to meet and work with kids from all across America. The Wolfpack has also helped form CubeSat teams in Nebraska and North Carolina. The students of the Wolfpack mentor these students from Nebraska and North Carolina, and then those students can go out on their own and reach success while having the Wolfpack, of course, as a partner. In fact, the success of this was so vast that the Nebraska team was actually selected by NASA for its first CubeSat. Throughout this presentation, I discussed a lot about the Wolfpack, what we're doing, what we have accomplished, but I never discussed the actual problem we're, we're addressing. The issue is that education is siloed and it's conceptual and the STEM workforce is great. Right now, there's a lack of authentic STEM experiences and applications to the real world. There are no effective aerospace curriculums and an educator access and engagement system for professional organizations is non-existent. The needs and way to solve this include instilling a STEM identity earlier and fostering it through high school, especially for underrepresented populations. Providing distinctive aerospace opportunities allows students to be more competitive for school and college applications, making this also a necessity. And a final way to solve this is to allow for educator training 
So educators all across America can model so they know how to do these things for their own students. And this leads right into my next point, outreach opportunities. The Wolfpack has a very strong outreach program that aims to develop a STEM identity for students as young as five to seven years old, as that is when it forms. In order to do this, the students of the Wolfpack created an activity book and coloring book. Students also authored a children's book that is now on Amazon. Additionally, there is a how-to book for educators, so as I stated earlier, educators can model what the Wolfpack has done. Doing the real work of aerospace at a young age incorporates and reinforces 21st century skills with a project-based learning bent. These mature and engaging opportunities have proven to stimulate students' interest in STEM at very young age levels and excites them for a potential career in STEM at an age as young as 11. To that end, social cognitive frameworks with social cognitive career theory in particular suggest that early on, students began to formulate an identity that is ultimately reflected in their career choices. In addition to providing role models, mentors, and activities that engage young students, it is imperative to continue the formation of science identity for all students in order to bolster the STEM pipeline and make sure they go into the STEM pipeline. Educational psychologist Eric Erickson's theory suggests that children go through several stages in developing a self-identity. Particularly of note from this research are the competency and fidelity stages which occur from ages 5 to 12. Delic notes that since students are developing an understanding of what they do well, along with a sense of identity to which they belong, it makes sense to augment classrooms to provide hands-on experiences that provide both group and personal science identity formation. Educators who understand the importance of this vital time will help students from all backgrounds to see themselves as science types early on, which will be especially important for underrepresented groups in the STEM pipeline of the future. This slide shows the student age versus activity rigor of current student experiences. To sum up this table, the activities the students of the Wolfpack are doing match up to a much older age level. Students of the Wolfpack, like myself, are doing incredibly difficult activities and projects, but enjoy them. Nowhere are its students ages 11 to 18 getting these wonderful opportunities. So to solve the challenges of the future, the STEM pipeline must be strengthened. There needs to be engaging products like the Wolfpacks, engaging students in STEM needs to start at a young age, and a real world change needs to be made and can be implemented for the ways discussed in this presentation. And to conclude, engaging students in STEM is crucial. The Wolfpack has laid out a platform for educators to model and has also created a platform in which students from all across America can come work on the various projects at their own desire. The Wolfpack is creating the future scientists, engineers, and space law lawyers. Thank you, and now I look forward to answering your questions.